Hello, welcome to Roulette Profit and Stop here on YouTube. Uh, thanks for all the support to date uh, with all the subscriptions and the likes. Uh, it's been absolutely phenomenal and thanks very, very much indeed for that. Really well supported. Um, what I'm sharing on my channel, if you don't already know, if you're new to my channel um, and you're just tuning in, I'm a regular punter. I love a gamble. I know how to record content and stream for YouTube. Um, I'm not affiliated to any online casinos. I'm not looking particularly to go down that route. I'm more of I'm more on the on the side of showing people how to build a balance from next to nothing in their account, so they can start making money and not losing it. That's the idea. So jump in, get a couple of wins, and then stop. You know, if you're if you're a gambler. And you've played for quite a long time and you always seem to be on the losing side maybe i can show you something that'll sh sh switch your gameplay around and you know make you actually make a few units of profit rather than blowing it all and actually withdrawing some money and making that money that you've withdrawn you know useful for you and not for the casino uh, that's what i'm going to try and show and share on my channel i do develop my own roulette tools, which you can see on screen. My brother and myself have put these together. I've done, uh, I did four years worth of research. I took it upon my own, myself, to uh, do a bit of research for four years, which is quite a long time, to be fair. That's every day for four years I did it. Most days, not every day. Um, and I tracked close to two million numbers, two million spins. It was an absolute, it was like eight hours a day I did it for a long time. And um, I just worked out what works best for me and how I can make profit through gambling, playing roulette. So that's what you're going to see on my channel. Um, check out my website. There will be a link in the description below. So when you click on more information underneath this channel, underneath the video, it'll expand more information. And then you'll see uh, at the bottom of that, you'll see um, my website. If you click on that link, it takes you through to the site and you can gain access to my roulette tools. There is a free roulette tool available on the site. I would recommend that you definitely check that out because that will give you a bit of an insight into what's happening on the table after each spin. And from that, you might be able to just make money just using that, and that's free. So explore the free option first, which is what I would advise anybody to do. Okay. Here we go. So I'm just going to show you my subscription count in the top right hand corner underneath my pro profile image. That's me, by the way. I've got 1,724 subscribers now. Thanks very, very much indeed. Uh, my name's Ian. I'm from the UK. And I am going to now build a balance. This is what I'm going to do. So before I carry on any further, I need to put the sheet on screen. I've got an, uh, a Google Sheet um, which is going to track how much I'm making basically so there you go and the tool i'm using is this missing section tool um so that's the tool i'm using missing section um this one's going to give me all the information i need to know about this table it's going to give me the individual number count how many spins has passed since a number last hit it's going to do the same with the outside bets, the dozens, the rows, and the section numbers. That's what this tool does. So I can set a tracking value in the lower left corner, which is currently set to a value of 6. I can reduce that down to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or increase it greater than 6. Really up to you what you want to track. And when you're tracking, you're tracking numbers that have not yet hit. And it's going to highlight blue if it matches your tracking value. So... If, I, if it misses the first dozen for six spins in a row, it's not hit those 12 numbers for six spins in a row, it's going to alert me. The tool's going to alert me of that. And that's what I'm going to be doing on this setup. So, first things first, is input all the numbers from this table into the tool. So we've got 19, 36, uh, 24, 33. So I'm just clicking on the numbers on the tool. Clicking the numbers on the tool. And then you'll see stuff start to highlight. And then once it's hit the areas it the, the, it doesn't highlight anymore, once it's hit, it resets it, um, and the count starts again. 
So I've caught up with this dealer. I've got £10 in my balance, by the way. And my target's £2. That is it. I just want to see how this table's playing and see if I can achieve uh, a £2 target. So I'm going to take it slow and show you exactly and walk you through the process of what I'm actually doing. It's really, 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 really simple. Uh, so, yeah. So my target's £2. If I get to 12, I'll type 12 in this pocket, in this cell here, like that. And that's going to show you then um, I've got £2 profit. And then I'll, I'll set myself another target. If I get it relatively easy, quite fast and early on, I'll, um, I'll stay on for a little bit longer and get another hit. Also, you'll be able to see the percentage. There's a percentage here of 14% strike rate of a number hitting in that first dozen over the last 14 spins so 14 percent and we've got 57 percent strike rate on the second dozen numbers hitting and we've got a 28 percent strike rate on the third dozen so at the minute the second dozen numbers are hitting this dealer looks really happy number seven <laughs> I'm going to be playing at a value of 10 pence and 20 pence stakes on this table because my bankroll is only small and I don't I only need to go at 10s and 20s to get to my target of 2 pounds. It's really you know keep it within your means, keep it within your uh, boundaries of where you want to play and what you want to do. If you make it too difficult for yourself, it will be difficult. It'll be more than difficult. It'll be, it'll be where it'll be, it'll be a tough session. So just make it as easy as comfortable as, you know. Here we go. Middle row was not hit for six spins. That's my first bet. And I'm just going to do twenty pence just to show you the type of returns I'm going to get. So if this hits on my first bet, on this middle row, um, this is going to give me two to one on my twenty pence stake, and that'll give me forty pence profit. And I'm only looking to make two quid. I'm only looking to make two pound or two dollars or two euros. I'm making 40 cents. So that's kind of, you know, that gets the ball rolling if it hits. There you go. There's my hit, 35. That was a manipulated spin of the ball, but I got my hit. So that's my first win. First bet, first win. You can see I've now got a balance of 1040. So I'm 40 pence up. Of the tw of the two pound I'm looking to make, or the two dollars, or the two euros, however you want to term that that value. Um, but yeah, this is this is pretty much me. This is what I do. I take ten pounds and I cre create like three hundred quid from ten pounds, and I've done it on multiple casinos. This is my third casino so far. I've got another casino to do this on before I really start making money, and you'll be able to see what I'm all about. Because you've not really seen, I've not really demonstrated it properly. I've given you glimpses, glimpses of what I do and told you what I do, but I've not really showed you proper. So I am going to get um, consistent winnings from across up to five casinos. Probably play four, I think, but up to five. Well, four casinos. I'm going to get profit consistently. And I said I can say that with a degree of confidence um, because of the stakes I'm going to be playing at, the targets I'm setting myself, the tools are going to give me that information that I need to get those wins. And if the tools aren't playing, then I look at how the table's playing. But I'm doing that also anyway. I'm also when I'm using the tool, I'm also looking at where the balls dropping in the pocket in relation to what the tool's telling me and the history of numbers. So I'm not just looking at the roulette tool to make the decisions for me. Ma majority of the time I am, but I'm also, if it's not hitting when I'm expecting to get it, it, it hitting, I have to look at what the table's doing because it, the table's always going to be adjusting and changing. It's always going to happen. So you've got to adjust and make changes as you see the table making changes because if you don't, It'll catch you out and you'll just lose a lot of money. So your best option is to um, um, 
Um, just um, see what see what happens and see how you feel. The feeling of the game, how much you've got in your bankroll, what you want to get out of it. I know I'm talking a lot, but um, it all makes sense. It'll all come together. If you've gambled for a long enough, if you've gambled for long enough time, you'll know. Some some days you'll just want a bit of a blast where you just bet anything, anywhere, do whatever you want. I do I do that. And other days you want to be more structured in your gameplay, like I'm being now. I'm waiting for things to happen and show up on the tool before I start placing my bets. So it might take quite a while for it to do it, but you know what? I've got plenty of time. There's no rush, you know. So. It's not an issue. It's all good. That's 26. So, if you wanted to do, you could attract, you could uh, decrease the tracking value down to 5 and 4. If I do 4, you can see, look, all these areas that I haven't hit for 4 spins in a row. 1 to 18 is not hit. Odds not hit. First dozen's not hit. And the bottom roll's not hit. So, you could cover... Um, the odd numbers in the first and well, basically one and seven you could cover with a neighbor number either side you could do that and there's 16 so I'll put it back up to six but you could you could do all sorts of stuff I've got some people that use this tool they set it down to three like that <clears throat> and they're just bet on the numbers that I haven't hit for three spins Better than the dozens that I haven't hit for three in a row. And they just make a lot of money just doing that. Um, you know, for me, I like to wait for six losing spins in a row because I'm comfortable and I'm confident that I am going to get my hit. Some people just bet on the last dozen out, which was the, the second dozen, and they would have hit again there on the 18. So we've got odd, and we've got the first dozen. I could do odd first dozen numbers here, but because I've only got a small bankroll, I'm going to stick just to doing... 20 pence on the first dozen. It would be silly of me to go for it um, doing the odd first dozen numbers at this level of stake. Um, I would I would take more of a risk when I'm a bit further ahead. Um, and I would only do like one or two bets worth of risk. You know, proper risk. 34, that is a miss look. That's a good job I didn't do it, isn't it? I mean, I could do it now at 10 pence, right? I'll just get me demonstrate it to you an idea. There you go. It's cost me 60 pence, right? So it would cost me 20 pence for the first bet on the first dozen. The next bet would be... Uh, next bet would be... This would actually cost me 60 pence total because I'd be doing 40 pence now on that first dozen. So this is actually evens out how much I would have spent just doing the first dozen, because my next bet's 40 pence on the first dozen. If I lose on my first, I double up on my second. Seven would have been nice, wouldn't it? So that's 29, that's one off. Or was it? <laughs> so now I'm going to go with um, 60 pence on the, uh, the first dozen. So you've got to weigh up how much things are going to cost you. If I was to hit on one of those uh, first dozen odd numbers that would have paid nicely that would have got to my target this is my third bet for 1 through to 12 there we go there's the 10 that'll do third bet win sweet so I've had two wins and now I'm up by 80 pence of my two pound that I'm looking to make so some people might think well this is taking an absolute age I would agree with you it is but you know what? I'd rather take my time and build my balance rather than rush into things and chase a loss, increase my stakes and lose the whole money in like minutes. I'd rather take longer time to build my balance slowly. Uh, so many times in the past I've um, rushed into things and that's been a huge, you know, negative towards my gameplay massive negative when i've rushed into things and i've increased my bet too soon 
and it's just caught me out because um you know i'm playing to the casino rather than playing my own game you know what i mean i'm playing into the casino's hands by increasing my stakes too soon for the stake that i'm playing and the game that i'm playing and that has a massive effect on your bankroll and um it's it's not a good feeling so i try and avoid that at all costs really so i try and put off increasing my stakes for as long as possible so like um i watch um art of war gambling strategies on youtube art of war gambling strategies his, his link to his youtube channel is in the description make sure you check his channel out he has got some great advice or great um i don't think he shows it as a, i don't know if he sees it as advice or not actually to be fair but he's, he's got some great information let's say of betting structures really good it's a real you know eye-opener into how you could use the bet type for the volatility rather than your staking as the volatility so what i mean by that it'll be better to demonstrate that than i will be but i'll give you a brief insight so basically instead of increasing your stake every time you lose you're using the bet type so you, you instead of doing like a, an outside bet like an even money bet and then then a two to one and then a, a five to one and then all that you, you're using you, you are using the bet types to you're not increasing your stake but you're using the you're saying at the same level of stake but you you're moving your bets around the table so you're getting the better you're getting bigger odds you're using the odds on the bet type as your uh um progression if you will the structure it's a better structure it's way better because you, you you still only if you lose you're only losing smart the same amount all the time whereas if you're doing a um progression you you're losing twice as much or, or, or more in cases you know or much more in cases so it's a better way of playing absolutely 100 percent. so it would mean what you're sacrificing is betting fewer numbers but to be fair you don't have to cover a lot of numbers if, you, if the table's going to pay and play it's going to hit no, your number no matter what so you just want to drip feed but like i would say drip feed the table with your with your bets rather than um you know opening the floodgates on your bankroll so you can blow your money faster basically so don't do that yeah 25 that's manipulation Anyway, a lot of talking on this setup. A lot of talking. I've been recording for just coming up to 18 minutes. And I've had two bets. This is what I'm talking about. Slow build. I have got all the time in the world to do whatever I want to do here. I've got nothing planned for today. So I can stay on this all day. I can play this table. I can jump to a different table. I can adjust the tool to compensate what's happening on this the further in that I get. see that that was manipulation now people won't think it is but it absolutely is physics of the ball i love talking about the physics of the ball i did four months of this so um i, d I don't think people look at this uh, i really don't think people or many people look at the physics of the ball they just think it's all random um well to a degree it's random but um if you look at the speed of the ball dropping into the dish the speed of the ball will be always the same value always when it drops in just before it drops in it has to be the same value it cannot be too fast too too slow it will always be a constant that's a constant value in my opinion i think that's how it works so if, you, if i was to spin something in a circle so let's just look at the wall of death on a motorcycle motorcycle wall of death do you know that like a wall a horizontal like a say a motorbike spinning around the bevel the motorbike has to get up to a certain speed and it's always going to be that constant speed for it to go so it so it it, it cycles around at 
the correct speed so it doesn't fall down gravity's taking hold and doing its bit so it's the same principle for this ball dropping in the wheel it's going to slow down to a, a value which is always going to be the same before it drops in the dish so we know that's going to be constant the, the, the speed of the ball slowing down whatever that speed is before it drops in that is going to be constant and um, so so if you speed if you it's always going to be the same then you've got you've got a dealer change then you've got um the uh canoes these metal diamonds the canoes that's kind of um they're your variables that's what's known as a variable or a um i'll, I'll call it a value a variable then it makes sense to, it makes sense to me and it might, might make sense to other people they're the um they're the um things that can make it uh, they're the elements let's say that can make it throw the throw the ball off trajectory right and there's a few of those oh three zero neighbors i should have done that because of the dealer change and that would have got me to my target anyways so getting back on track the ball is going to spin in the bevel slow down to the same speed before it drops in the dish so we know that that's going to be constant then you've got well what does it what happens if it if the ball drops in close to a diamond right just before the diamond that it hits it and rebounds it and then what does it do so if you watch it for long enough it'll do the same actions and it's the same for every spin that you watch it'll do the same actions it'll do the same amount of pockets everything's the same within like a pocket or two it's really that simple i mean i can't make it it's fucking easy it really is um if if you if the ball wasn't manipulated in the ball in the wheel i would this casino would not last too long. It wouldn't wouldn't last two months. <laughs> it wouldn't last two months. Wow. It really wouldn't. This is my uh, third bet. Third dozen. Here we go. Looking to get to two pound twenty pence stake. Twenty five to thirty six. And there's number twenty. That's a me. That's a fresh number. So now you'll see on the tool all the numbers in the forties in the yellow that I've um, highlighted. I'm just going to repeat the bet and add a chip. Uh, so this is in relation to this 50 spins without a hit. So this is another option you can edit on this tool. Reduce it down. And you can see all the yellow dot, yellow circled numbers. I'll increase it. 50 is usually a good value to go off. So any number that hits, that's not hit for 40 spins to 49 spins, is a trigger to bet on the numbers that haven't hit for... Uh, 50 spins or greater. So I'm repeating the bet and adding another chip. This is my third bet for the third dozen. So a lot of talking on this one. But yeah, so the physics of the ball dropping in the dish. We need You need to know what's a constant, what's a fixed value you can go off because that's going to be your datum number, your point of origin, your go-to value, which is never going to change, right? Then you can go, okay, what, what are the variables? So... Um, you've got the edge of the pocket when the ball drops in. You've got like a, if it hits the corner edge, um, this is going to hit on the next bet. This is going to be a win. Ready? Fourth bet coming up. Um, so there are only, and again, it's, it's about the speed of the ball landing in the pocket. We know that what that's going to be roughly. So, or we should have a, a almost accurate value on that. Then we need to see, well, if the ball hits the corner edge of a pocket, it's going to bounce off, right? And it's only going to bounce, get this, get this information, right? On my four months of doing this, it does the same amount of pockets um, movement in either direction when it hits an edge. It's ridiculous. Um, here we go. So I'm going to do an intersection bet here. I'm going to go for this. Instead of doing um, what I would, instead of putting an extra bet out there, I'm putting, um, I'm spending £1.30 to try and catch 
25, 28, 31, 34. 25, 28, 31 or 34. And my jackpots. And that'll get me to my target. 25, 28, 31, 34. I think this is going to hit. 28. Ugh, oh, one off. I had 35 and he had... So he did one either side, which is really pisses me off, that. That pisses me off because... Um, when it does one either side like that... So if I lose like that, I do just the four numbers now. So I'll just do the 25, 28, 31, 34. So I'm down at 670. And I'm looking to catch... The 25, 28, 31, or 34. Let's see if I can get a hit. So 25, 28, 31, 34. This is an intersection bet. That's 15, which is a miss. So I'll click 15. So 30 to 36 has not landed now. So I'm going to go on the splits, but I'm also going to include the 29 because... Um, it's just an even amount of splits. I'll do 30 pence on the splits. A little bit of money back if that hits. So 29 to 36. So for 14 spins, it's not hit 30 to 36. I've gone away from the 25, 28, 31, and 34. Although I've got the 31, 34 covered. Um, but I think this might be a better bet. 29 to 36. 30. Come on, for fuck's sake. I think this is going to rinse me. So I'm doing too many silly bets here. I'm about to do another silly bet. But I, I have to include the 12 and the 3. The reason I've got to include the 12 and the 3 is because the 3 has been hitting and the 12 hit recently. And they're both either side of the 35, which I think is going to hit. So 35, 3 or 12 for a hit. No, where are you going? 33, that'll do. There's my hit. That was in the numbers in the 30s. So that gets me to 90 pence profit, but that was a little bit too risky, to be fair. Uh, bottom roll's not hit for 10 spins. We'll start at 20 pence on that. But yeah, so if you, um, if you count how many pockets the ball travels when it hits a corner edge of a, a number, that'll be... Within three pockets, that's the distance it'll travel all the time, either in one direction or the other. So you can make a mental, you can make a note of that. You can look at how the ball travels when it drops in a dish, how far that goes. You can make a note of that. Basically, it's really easy. It's I'm I'm giving you information here. You don't. It doesn't take much doing. Just watch, record a table for an hour. Well. 30 minutes, even less than that, it would, it would be able to see it. Um, and just look at the distance between how the pocket's travelling when it drops in the dish. That's all you need to do. It's really, it can be that easy. Number three, there we go. Oh, no, we don't have one. Number three's on fire in the minute. So, for 12 spins, it's not hit that. That's quite a lot of spins for a bottom row not to hit, but because it's at a value of 12, doesn't mean to say it's going to be coming in. So don't put all your money on that at all. Don't do that. Don't chase it. So I'm going to go to four four bets on this, and if it doesn't hit, I'm going to forget about it. Because if it's not hit when I get to 11, typically it doesn't hit till it gets to about 16 or greater. And by then, I would have spent too much money. So I'm hoping it's going to hit on this spin or the next. 24, it's a miss. I've got all these numbers that I haven't yet hit in the circles. This is my final bet for the bottom roll. And all the numbers in the circles, I'm going to be betting on those. Um, look at the positions of them as well. 22, 25 is missed, 28. 5, 8 is missed. 11, 21, 24 is missed, 27, that's an interesting pattern, anyway, 12, that's another miss, look, wow, not, because that's gone to 14, I'm going to forget about that, I'm going to do all the numbers that I haven't yet hit now, that is my bet, so 5, 9, 11, 21, I'm going to jump straight on this, 
Normally I would wait for a trigger, but I think I don't need to. Because I think one of these is going to hit. So the reason I don't think I need to wait is because of... There's 34. Now I changed my bet, didn't I? I changed my bet then to the 36. Because the table's changed how it's playing, basically. So I'm all, all, all the numbers that I haven't hit in the yellow circles, that's what I'm on. That's number 20, that pulled it back to 20. So this table is on collect mode. I would say this table is definitely on collect mode. Now, I am covering eight numbers. This is my third bet for, uh, I was covering seven, now eight, because 36 had, had added. Um, I believe... Because this table's changing a little bit of what it's where it's going, where the ball's landing, it's going to start hitting the numbers that I haven't yet hit, and this is where this is perfect for this setup. That's why I've jumped on it straight away. I would normally wait for a number that hasn't yet hit for a long time before I do it, but it is still hitting the repeaters. But I am still, I would still expend expect to hit any minute really. So five pounds eighty in the balance. Uh, I'm going to double up because I want to just catch this one hit and that's going to get me to where I need to be. And I've been on for 30 odd minutes now, 31 minutes. So when I say, you know, take your time, look at how, how the table's playing. It's now switching up. And I see a switch of what's happening on the table and it is going to start also putting in all these numbers that have yet to hit for 50 odd spins. I know that because that's what it, what it does. There's a repeater, nothing sweeter. Bit unlucky about that. I thought that was going to go down towards the um, the uh, the five there. So repeat the bet, still at twenty pence. I'm not going to increase it further. So what I'm hoping for, which which is what usually happens, is that the ball will hit one of my numbers that hasn't hit for a long time, and then in, within a couple of spins, it's going to hit another one that hasn't hit for a long time, and that's going to get me to where I need to be, unless this hits now. Uh, and we're good. 19. 19 is 44 misses. There we go. Now it's going to start playing. So I'm going to increase the stake because I believe this now is about to pop. But I've only got £1 left in the bankroll. I was up by 90 pence. And now I'm at 30 pence per number. So this is going to get me to my target, and this will be a stop because I've played for too long now. Uh, although the table is changing on how it's playing, it's putting in slightly, putting in all the new numbers. Um, I want to get a hit now, ideally. 36. Boom, thank you. 1936 is my combo. 36 just landed. I'm now 20 pence shy of my target. So I'm not going to go with all the, the numbers that I haven't yet hit now. I'm going to switch my bet to... The first dozen, 20 pence, because that's highlighted six spins without a miss. We already know the bottom row. The bottom row before went to as high as 14 spins without a hit. So we don't want to be placing bets on the bottom row, because that could go for another 14 spins without a hit. And if I hit on this spin, this gets me to my target. 11 is a hit. Thank you very much. So I've got now my target. I've just over, just over my target. And that's another one of those numbers in the yellow circles as well. So if I'd have repeated the same bet, I would have blasted my target. I'm going to get rid of this tool now. Go back to the main menu. I'm going to update to the sheet to 12.20. And that's just given me £2.20 profit. So, you know what? It took me uh, 34 minutes just to achieve £2.20. But you know what? I'm really comfortable with that. Um, I've given you a little bit of information about ball physics, but not too much. I've given you um, an indicator in the t how the table changes all the time. 
Um, it'll play for a certain amount of money. It's usually, it plays for about 12 spins in one value, and then it changes. And that's what... Um, I was waiting for the change to give the, the numbers that I haven't yet hit to come in. And um, that's what I was looking for, and that happened. So I, I timed it just about right, but it was right down to my last one pound if would, I would have lost. So... Um, I could have been. I would have been better to wait for number nineteen to drop in, which was a trigger number, incidentally, for that thirty-six which landed. So if I'd have waited for the trigger number, I would have spent a hell of a lot less money, and I would have got in further into profit. So I jumped in a little bit too soon, um, but I still managed to get to my target, which is what it's all about for me. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the content. I'll be back later to do do another recording, and I'm going to take this balance up to. 300 pounds from this 10 pound deposit that is my target so that's the plan i want to get up to i'll probably do four different casinos where i've got 300 i've got two of them at 300 and start with 20 pounds in each of both of those um and i want to get to 300 on this one and 300 on another and then i'm going to start showing you how to make money through gambling properly how i used to do it to build balances across four different casinos taking money as you go in and slowly taking money from the casino basically i'm going to show you how it's done okay thanks again for your time thanks for your support don't forget to hit subscribe give it a thumbs up see you again soon